Hello and good morning everyone. So today we are moving forward from page 147 to 148 USMLE step 1 2021 microbiology. I'm Dr. Ranjit Sa, an infectious disease expert as well as clinical researcher from Harvard Medical School. Uh, now we are moving forward to the we are discussing about the syphilis and among syphilis we have talked about this uh, previously about the all the type of syphilis like normally we have talked about what is syphilis this was caused by trypanopalidium and the, we know the diagnostics and treatment is very easy if you know the disease if you are able to diagnose this treatment is very easy the, you give the penicillin penicillin can be long acting like benzathine penicillin or normal penicillin z can be given and the patient will be cured depending upon the stages of the disease now moving, f we have known that it is, uh, we have divided our syphilis into primary, secondary, then latent, which in which there was early latent and late latent, then tertiary syphilis, and also discussed about the con congenital syphilis. You can see the images where we have discussed, this is the sanker in the primary syphilis, where we can excuse the fluid and then demonstrate this organism in dark field microscopy. In secondary syphilis, you have the rash all over the body, including palm and soul, there will be the development of this condylomata lata, then in tertiary syphilis, you develop this chronic gummas, there will be aortitis and there is the other complication as well. And in, in similarly, in congenital syphilis, you can see the congenital changes over here, including Hutchinson teeth and this rashes. So there will be like uh, rashes and also snuffles. So these were present as snuffles and rashes. This is known as the syphilitic rhinitis in a congenital syphilis. Now talking about the diagnosis, diagnosis is very important for syphilis you have known the syphilis is present prevalent all over the world this is one of the one of the one of the form of sexually transmitted disease it is an important burden and important alarming thing in the society as well and you know this can be spread from one partner to another having who are having the sexual contact so that's a very important disease and this will be in your medical ex entrance exam in any medical entrance exam all over the world including usmle so let's talk about the diagnosis the diagnosis is actually very simple but we need to understand the what are the tests we are going to do and how to evaluate clinically the patient okay so the main come the main aim of us what is the main aim for diagnosis first is to establish the diagnosis and then to start the treatment and then to see the prognosis of the patient so we need to Treat the patient, we need to understand the scenario in a three phase. First, if any patient come with symptom or without symptom, high risk people, we screen the patient, we diagnose it, then we go for the treatment and in treatment we see the response of the treatment. If the patient is improving or not, if improving, then what will be the situation and after cure, what will be the situation. So this is, you have, we have to understand. Moving forward, we know that di diagnosis of syphilis can be done by this VDRL and RPL that detects the non-specific antibody that reacts with the VIF cardi uh, cardiolipin quantitative inexpensive and widely available test for syphilis that is sensitive but not specific. So these are non-triponomal tests. Then uh, there is a specific test like triponomal test which we call the triponopalidium uh, hemagglutination assay, uh, then FTAVS fluorescence based antibody assay non specific words rpr and vdrl so these are the screening test and there was the specific test so let me understand you first before going to this what is rpr what is vdrl what are these tests and then we will understand actually if any person come then the first aim to diagnose is to diagnose direct demonstration of the evidence direct demonstration of the um, bacteria direct demonstration of the antigen so that can be done directly by saying if it is in a primary primary syphilis that is the sanker is there you excuse the fluid then directly see under the microscope in microscope you can see this under dark field microscopy you will see the spirochetes diagnosis confirmed you can do another way you can uh, collect the fluid from the lesion the sanker then you do the fluorescence antibody test fluorescence level you see in the fluorescence microscope you will diagnose the disease or you evaluate that um, sample collected from the sanker and directly process for the PCR. So in this way, you can directly demonstrating the parasite. So this is the direct evidence. You are directly demonstrating the bacteria. 
in any cases there will be the two phases when you do a do a microbiological diagnosis of any diseases then there is a two phases of the diagnosis one is direct demonstration of the bacteria or say virus or the parasite that is the direct demonstration of the antigen another is indirect evidence that is demonstrating the antibody so antibody is anything entered into your body then your immune system triggers and then produce the antibody that is also evidence but that is indirect evidence that you are not targeting direct bacteria you are targeting the response that body has formed in response to the bacteria that is entered into inter inter your body that is also one of the evidence but that is indirect evidence we can go for direct testing like direct film microscopic or pcr that will be very confirmatory and easy but these things are not feasible in all laboratories these are expensive one they, you know, do not have in all the laboratories you may need a reference laboratory for direct testing so you can go for this indirect testing or say serological testing serological testing among this trypanosomal and non trypanosomal test both are very easy less expensive and easily available in all laboratory even include all laboratory of nepal as well so that's is easy to you can found this rpr and video screening in any lab and that can you by screening we can do what uh, you pay your patient have the syphilis or not okay so we have a serological testing like non trypanosomal that is rpr and vdrl and trypanosomal that is fta abs and tpfa tppa or tpha this is trypanosomal peridium hemagglutinase so tpha or passive agglutination assay so these are the test now one more thing is that false positive so there will be a certain condition where you will this find this rpr or vdrl as a false positive this can occurs in a patient with we can remember by the formula the positive false positive result on vdrl positive vdrl so vdrl itself will help us to remember the false positive result like pregnancy viral infection of e epstein barr virus and hepatitis then drugs like chlorpromazine and procainamide then rheumatic fever and lupus and leprosy so these are the condition where if you screen the patient the normal patient this type of patient who doesn't have the syphilis will also be positive for rpr or vdrl so this screening test can be false positive and the false positive condition are pregnancy viral infection drugs rheumatic fever and lupus and leprosy so in this situation your test can be positive so you should should have to consider this is a just a false positive report you can further confirm by doing the trypanosomal test since in your body there is no trypanosomal anti spirochetes is not inter trypanosomal pallidum has not inter so trypanosomal specific anti will will not positive so it will be when in this situation you screen rp or vdr will be positive but specific test like trypanosomal pallidum passive agglutination assay or say fluorescent based antibody assay will be negative so in this way you can understand okay let's first go to the point all trypanosomal tests measure both immunoglobulin g and m anti phospholipid antibodies formed by the host in response to the lipodial material released by the damaged host cell early in the infection and lipid from the cell surface of the trypanosoma itself so when we are discussing about the non trypanosomal antibodies that is not related to the trypanosoma pallidum that is not related to your bug your bacteria these are the non specific antibody why they are formed because they are formed by the damage host cell when they enter into our body they damage the host cell and the when the host cell gets damaged there is a production of this uh, anti phospholipid antibodies and they are circulating in your body they have nothing related to they are not antigenically related to your trypanosoma pallidum so these are non specific although they are released when bacteria enter inside your body so there is a damage to your host cell and then the, that bacteria, that uh, this antibody was formed but it is not specific to this trypanosoma all trypanosomal test use trypanosoma pallidum or it components as the antigen so there are two type of test you have to understand one we are targeting the antibody that is formed against the trypanosoma pallidum the bacteria the bug and another is just the by product the bacteria entered inside the body they damage the host cell the host cell when get damaged there is the release of certain substances lipodial sub substances that antibody the against them antibody is formed so we can measure that also but that are non specific so you have to understand this too now non specific test will be done by the vdrl and rpr you know we are discussing over non specific non trypanosomal we will do rpr and vdrl specific test we can do through the tp pa or tpha and fta abs so in this way you have to understand 
Now let me take to uh, some of the picture to understand you. So VDRL is a test, is a screening test for syphilis. It is major substance protein called antibodies, which your body may produce if you have come, came in contact with a bacteria that would cause syphilis. Blood is drawn from the venipuncture, usually from the inside the elbow or back of the hand. That is uh, blood collection procedure. But you have to understand this VDRL is measuring for, is a screening test this VDRL or RPR, but they measuring the non-specific antibody. Again, let me come to the here. So you can see over here that they make a mixer in a lab. What we do, we make a mixer that is mixer is composed of, uh, you can see they are composed of beef cardiolipin, cholesterol and lecithin. This three composition is present. This will act as the antigen and in your body there is antibody. So there is, will be antigen antibody reaction and then there will be the precipitation or flocculation. In this way, the RPR or VDRL will be positive. So this is just a, we make a mixer. Mixer will be of beef cardiolipin, cholesterol and lecithin and our body there is the formation of the antibody against this lipid or say antiphosphate lipid. So this antibody and this antigen that is present in the market, you are available in a kit, in a uh, say bottle or in say, you, I'll show you the picture actually. So see, these are the, this VDRL where these are the composition, this contain the composition of this beef cardiolipin, cholesterol and lecithin. These are antigen inside your blood, in your serum, there is antibody. You put antigen and antibody, there will be a reaction and there will be a preservation of say flocculation. So when there is the antigen and antibody, you know there is the, it gives you the information that there is antibody, this non-specific antibody inside your body and now that is positive. So your patient is now suspected for syphilis. You go for that specific text like treponomal test and then that is also positive then diagnosis confirmed. So we have understood what is present outside inside and this is the mixture of cardiolipin, this lip, cardiolipin, lecithin and cholesterol put on a glide slide, a purified mixer and then a flocculation or clumping of the mixer is read microscopic as reactive if clumping occurs and non-reactive if there is no clumping. So this is the simple method of doing a screening test. In this test, heated serum or unheated cerebrospinal fluid is mixed with the reagent. Reagent, what is reagent? A purified mixture of lipids such as cardiolipin, lecithin and cholesterol on a glass light and a flocculation or clumping of the mixture is reagent microscopically as reactive. So if there is a flocculation or if there is, there is the clumping, then we say the reaction is positive. Now patient has the antibody that may be a non-troponomal antibody. It's okay. Now we can, we have now level as a Syphilis screening test positive. We do go for the confirmation test. If a confirmation test TPHA or FTABS is positive now, our diagnosis is confirmed. Then we go for the staging and treatment. So we have understood about this uh, uh, feature. There are uh, this uh, all are they can again take uh, talking about this VDRL which has the this cholesterol lecithin and cholesterol antigen. Non-treponal non antibody test can give a false test gives a false positive because they are directed against the cardiolipin, lecithin, cholesterol antigen. So that is a different type of, this is a different antigen. So that may be a false positive that you have to understand. Okay, a specific is the detection of a specific troponomal antigen is possible using method like passive agglutination, this treponoma hem hemagglutinin, treponoma pallidium hemagglutination assay or treponoma pallidium particulate, particle, particle agglutination assay, then there can be fluorescence treponomal antibody absorption test. So we all can do the non-specific and specific, but you have to understand non-specific, we are talking about non-specific antibody, specific, we are talking about directly of the antibody of the component of treponoma pallidium. Okay, now this is an example you can see over here. These are the mixture of your uh, cardiolipin, then lecithin, and their cholesterol. This per, draw the patient serum, then you sit, draw the patient blood. You se separate the serum in serum. You can just put some 50 microliters, then put the reagent as well, mix it for a few minutes, and you see the clumping or flocculation. If there is positive, there will be clumping. If it's called reactive, if not, then it's not. This is negative test. This is control. This is your test. And you see there, there is the flocculation. So this is positive. Cardiolipin, non treponomal antigen, serum of the patient, antibody. This all will be react and form the antigen antibody reaction and slide test can be done. So in this way, you can do your screening test. 
Now coming to the algorithm, you can see the algorithm, how, what are the procedure, you suspect a patient or patient with the symptom or high risk patient, you, if there is a Sankar lesion, you do the direct micro, direct fluorescence microscopic or dark field microscopy and if you demonstrate the organism, syphilis is 100% confirmatory, you go for the treatment with the penicillin, that may be a long acting benzathine penicillin or penicillin Z. If the patient suspected serum, you have de 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 tested for non treponormal test, if it is negative, you can repeat over 1 to 12 weeks, you can again repeat it. If it is positive, then what we can do? We can do for the specific, that it, it will go for the specific test, there is a treponormal test. If a treponormal test is positive, your syphilis is likely, your confirmed diagnosis is confirmed. If it is negative, then you can repeat the detection or perform different treponoma test if clinically indicated. If you are suspecting high, there are the, I have told you, there can be TPHA, TPPA, there is treponoma palladium particular agglutination particular assay, then there can be FTA, ABS, so we can do a different test if it is clinically highly suspicious. If you are already this uh, screening test positive, then you can go for the repeat test as well. But you have to understand the screening test is non troponomal If it is the Sankar, you have detected the Sankar, Sankar is painless ulcer, that can be gone undetected. So you may not able to have a chance to take this cancer, this Sankar. So if there is no, if there is Sankar, you go and excuse that lesion and found, go, then examine that fluid for dark field microscopy or say PCR or say fluorescent microscope and you confirm the diagnosis. But that may be not possible for the normal laboratories. So you go to the normal lab where you did so take out the blood, separate the serum, do the non treponormal test, positive. You do the specific test, treponormal test, positive, syphilis likely. If negative, then we can repeat it and check if it clinically is significant. And again, if there is Sankar, yes, direct dark field microscopy or direct fluorescence and antibody positive, then you go for this side. If no, you do the non treponormal test, screening positive, perform the treponormal test, positive consists with the infection. If negative, you can repeat in 1 to 12 weeks, clinically indicated. So we have came to know that there are the two types of trip, treponormal and non treponormal, and we know the indication. One more thing important is that this non treponormal test will be positive, means there is a likely chance of infection. If they are negative, there will be this condition like prozone phenomenon. So patient would develop, you are, we are suspecting of syphilis, there is high antibody, then there, in that situation the prozone phenomena may lead to negative, false negative. So that is a very rare such situation. It can be positive, you have to dilute the serum and then it will come as positive. This prozone phenomena is due to more antibody inside your body that is not react with the antigen. Now talking about one more thing, if you clinically, if you treat a patient, after treating this non treponormal test will be decreased or get vanished. Only treponormal test, confirmatory test will present lifelong. So a patient you give diagnose the syphilis you treat it after treating what happened the bacteria has been killed the bacteria has been dead so there will no non-specific inflammation there is no damage to the host cell so the non-specific non-treponormal antibody will disappear and only treponormal test will be present lifelong so a person if detecting you are detecting antibody you are screening and you are finding non-treponormal test negative but finding treponormal test positive you don't have to be uh, surprise because this is the condition when we will find after treating the patient. This non treponomal will be vanished, treponomal will be present lifelong even after treatment. So, a patient, so this treponomal, non treponomal test becomes a marker.